Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Morgan and I'm here to share with you my love of all things DIY and home decor for as little money as possible. Today is the first episode in a series that I'm going to call, Can Brooks Break It? Wanna do it with me? Can Brooks Break It? Can Brooks Break It? Yeah. <laughs> So this is going to be a series where I make cute home decor that you don't have to worry about your kids or your pets or your husband <laughs> breaking or ruining or, <laughs> or damaging. So I'm going to make some decor and then I'll give it to Brooks and let him play with it and see if he can break it. And hopefully he can't. So today I'm going to be trying my hand at paper mache. Now I don't think I've done paper mache since I was like eight. <laughs> when I was like making pinatas out of newspaper. So we're taking the paper mache up a level and we're gonna be making a vase and a trinket tray. Now I wanted to try out two different ways of doing paper mache. One is the traditional with the paste and the newspaper strips. And then the other way I'm gonna be making an actual paper mache clay and then putting that clay over the mold. I'll be linking where I got both of those recipes in the description box below. So let's make some paper mache. So before we start paper mache we have to make a mold. I'm using balloons and cardboard, but you can use just about anything. So I blew up my balloon to the size I wanted and then cut out some strips of cardboard. Running your fingers down a strip of cardboard a couple times will help you maneuver it more easily. And then I just attach the cardboard pieces off camera with some painter's tape. I cut the top so it's longer in the back and shorter in the front and then cut a little spout and then use tape to shape the spout. I then cut two handles out of cardboard and attach them with tape. I had to use a lot of tape because the tape did not stick to the bloom very well. And there's our completed mold. To make the paper mache paste, I combined one cup of flour and one cup of water. You might need to add a bit more water. You kind of have to experiment with it a little bit. You want it to look like a thick, creamy soup at the end. Then I added a teaspoon of salt to prevent mold. Then you just mix it all together and that's it. I ran out to my car to gather up all the newspaper that's been gathering there. You see, I knew I was saving it for a reason. I cut the newspaper into strips and then you just dip the strip into your mixture, make sure it's coated on both sides and then wipe off the excess with your fingers. There's really no rule on how big or small your paper strips need to be. I use super tiny strips of paper on the handles because that's what worked the best. One tip I have for you is when you put the newspaper on your mold, just let the newspaper do its own thing. Don't try to force it where you want it to go because that will end up creating creases in your newspaper. I ended up doing three layers of the paper mache. The first layer I did all my strips vertical, the second layer all my strips were horizontal, and then the third were vertical again. This will make your paper mache a lot stronger. Between each layer, I let it dry for 24 hours. Once the third layer was dry, we popped the balloon. We're gonna pop it, ready? After I took the balloon out, I was left with this ring of raised tape, so I used my box cutter to cut out as much as I could. Now you could totally leave it like this and go in with a couple coats of paint and be done and it'll still be super hard and durable. But I wanted to go just one step further and cover it in a thin layer of joint compound. Now this is gonna make it even more durable, but mostly I'm doing it to add really cool texture and to cover up some of the creases in the newspaper. You really don't need a lot of joint compound, just a very thin layer will give you great texture and will cut down on the drying time. Once the joint compound dried, I grabbed some paint. This paint is called Cream In My Coffee, and then I just mixed it with some baking soda. And I just applied this paint all over, starting from the inside and working towards the outside. Guys, look how good that texture is. So we're gonna make some clay 
Okay, huh, Brooks? We're gonna make some paper mache clay. We're gonna use one and a fourth cups, cups of damp paper towels or, or toilet paper. Throw it in there. Put it in there. Yay, good job. Okay, throw it in there. Put it in there. Good job. Okay, so he said squeeze it out. What do you think? I think that looks like one. Okay, and a four. Yeah, okay, that's all right. Okay, so we're just gonna break it up with our hands. <laughs> no, 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 don't dump that. That says half to one cup of flour, so I'm just gonna use half a cup and then go from there. That is three fourths cup of Elmer's glue or glue all, just white glue. So, got a fourth of a cup. I'm not too worried about putting them in my measuring cups because, I mean, kids eat this stuff, so it shouldn't be too bad to. <laughs> it shouldn't be toxic, right? Yeah, safe and non-toxic, see? So, we're fine. Okay, so, three-fourths cup is like perfectly this size of glue. So let's see, 7.625 fluid ounces is like perfect three-fourths cup. The last ingredient is a cup of joint compound. I am going to do that last and see if I can mix it with my hands because I really want to be able to use this mixer again. No. Oh, Brooks, 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 no, 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 no. That's what it looks like all mixed up before we put in the joint compound. I'm just using this sheetrock all purpose. And I'm using our most beat up measuring cup because I'm not gonna use this again for food purposes. I'm just scooping it out with my hand. Okay, and this is what my clay looks like all mixed. It's a tiny bit sticky, but but I feel like it holds together well. I honestly don't know what it would do to it to add more flour, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay, to make this mold, I blew up a balloon and cut a paper towel roll three ways to act as legs. And I cut the paper towel rolls at a slant so they fit better on the balloon. And I just used a little bit of clay around the edges of the legs to stick them on the balloon. However, this really isn't the best way. I would actually recommend putting your clay all over the bottom of the balloon and then sticking the legs to that, and you'll see why in a minute. I did try using a spackling tool to apply the clay, but that just wasn't really working very well, so I ended up using my hands instead, and that worked great. I would recommend doing a thin layer of clay and then going in with another layer if you think you need it. Now one thing I forgot to mention when making the clay, you can't use the DAP brand of joint compound. I think that's usually the kind that turn, that's pink and turns white. Um, if you use the DAP brand, the clay won't work. I let this dry for about 15 hours and then pop the balloon and let it dry from the inside for about six more hours. Okay, so um, now you can see why it's better to cover the bottom of the balloon in clay and then stick the cardboard rolls in it. I ended up with three holes in my bowl, so I covered them up with painter's tape and applied a thin layer of paper mache clay to the inside of the bowl. I really 
like the texture the clay gives to this bowl, but if you want a smoother finish, you could do a layer of joint compound to fill in all the dips. I would use caution if you wanted to sand the clay after it's dry. There are a lot of warnings on the joint compound container about inhaling the dry dust that you get from sanding. So, if you do decide to sand it, make sure you're outside wearing a mask and that your sandpaper is wet to minimize the amount of dust you're producing. Once the clay dried, I went in with the same color of paint, the cream in my coffee, and painted a layer on the inside and the outside of the bowl. Okay, look how cute this spinning turntable is. I found it at the Target dollar spot, and I just love it. Okay, so pros and cons. With the traditional paper mache, I'd say one of the cons is how long it takes. <laughs> it took me a little bit more than an hour to cover the whole thing in the newspaper. And then if you want it to be really hard and solid, you want at least three layers. And you have to wait 24 hours between each layer, so that's like a three or four day project you got on your hands. It's a little bit tedious. It takes a while to do. It's definitely a good project to do while watching a movie or listening to a podcast. It's definitely more messy. Oh my goodness, your hands are going to be covered in the paper mache paste. I would recommend washing your hands a couple of times during the process because then your hands just start getting like really sticky. Like when I was doing the handles on my project and I had to use small pieces of paper, I made sure to wash my hands before doing that because um, otherwise the paper was just sticking all over my fingers. The pros of the traditional paper mache is one, it's super, super strong. You can push on it pretty hard and it won't bend at all, especially if you do those three layers. And you can do more than three layers if you feel like you need it too. I wouldn't do less than three layers though. Another pro is that you can make this very, very smooth if you wanted to. The clay has a lot of texture to it. Um, so the traditional paper mache, if you wanted more of a smooth look, um, I would go with that one. The best thing about the traditional paper mache is it costs basically nothing to do. If you have a balloon and some newspaper and some flour, like you're good, or maybe some cardboard. So the pros and cons of the paper mache clay. Um, the pro, I say the number one pro is that it's just so much faster. You really only have to do one layer of the paper mache clay. You can do two. Another pro is that it was just more fun. I had a lot more fun putting the clay on my mold than I did putting the newspaper on my mold. And then the third pro I think is a pro, but also it could be a con and that's texture. The paper mache clay has a lot of texture. So if you want a lot of texture, then it's good. But if you don't want a lot of texture, then it's bad. So it really just depends on what project you're making, what you're trying to do with it, will ultimately determine if you want the texture or not. Another con of the clay, it does take a little bit longer to dry. With my traditional paper mache, it dried um, in 24 hours, but the clay had the same drying time and it was still wet. So I actually popped the balloon and then set it outside in our 100 degree heat so that it would dry more quickly. I think the biggest con of the paper mache clay is that it does cost more money. For me, I had everything that I needed for the traditional paper mache, but for the clay, I had to buy a joint compound and I had to buy glue. So around $10 to make the paper mache clay. So those are my thoughts. I personally like working with the clay better, but I like the outcome of the traditional better. So here you go. Can bricks break it? Guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. I appreciate all of your likes and your comments and your views and your subscriptions. I love it. I love all of your support. Let me know which project you guys are gonna try out. Are you gonna do the traditional or the clay paper mache? I am honestly so amazed by this paper mache. Like, oh my goodness. Paper mache is just the perfect low budget DIY project. You can literally make anything that you can think of. As long as you can make a mold for it, you can do it. Let me know if you guys have any ideas on something that we can make with paper mache. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Ow. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a vacuum. Oh, bricks.